Hello and welcome to week 29 of the Foot Weekly Podcast. We've got a content episode. Looking forward to getting into this one because we have returning after two weeks in Korea, Josh Excels. Hello. And Young Haseo, how's it going? Yes, uh, it's been uh, it's been some good time off, but it feels like I missed the best promo of the year. I think interesting. Uh, we'll have to have a discussion on that because I think there's a, that is a contentious topic. Birthday's been good, but uh, fantasy has been too. So uh, we have with us talking of fantasies, the Panthers here, the Panthers, and I'm on the podcast as well, so I'm not trying to avoid you at least not at the moment this this week. Yeah, <laughs> how are you doing? Yeah, good. I've been enjoying it. Have you found? Recent promos, I know it's not birthday anymore, but... Uh, yeah, I thought it was very good, actually. I, I liked it a lot. I thought they started to nail a lot of the fundamentals that have been wrong this year. Yeah, would you say better than fantasy? Because I think fantasy got good reviews, too. I think fantasy is only better because of live cards, mm. but birthday otherwise was better across the board. I think that's fair. I mean, we're now into Golasso, and that's a completely new promo we've never had before. And to be fair, it feels like it's been popular, actually. And it, it sort of surprised me because it is seemingly very focused around getting the players in packs. But actually, they've been, it seems, relatively common. So people have got them in packs. And it feels rare that we get lots of pound-for-pound pound nominations for players that are actually currently in packs, which we have. So we'll dive into pound-for-pound. Pound, but before that, we'll get Nep to pick last week's pound-for-pound pound winner. We had nominated the Fantasy FC Stanway. The uh, birthday Reinders, birthday Ed Hegerberg with five star skills, and the birthday Perez. I can see the bias coming in already, but uh. <laughs> well, it's actually <laughs> I've had a horrible experience with Perez this year. Oh, okay. I didn't like his base card. I hated his Thunderstruck card, and his birthday card, especially with the five star weak foot, is genuinely phenomenal. And then I was watching the Arsenal Invincibles last night and you, you don't realise how good Perez was in that season when we <laughs> when we beat and It was amazing. So uh, I've got a newfound love for Perez. However, I think Stanway is undoubtedly mm. the pound for pound. Even now, even though her price has like probably tripled. Yeah, she was down like 40k. She's now 97,000 coins. Even now, 97,000 coins for an effective team of the year card is outrageous. Yeah. I know there's been some haters saying, well, she's only got 76 composure, but a lot of people have used her and said that actually it's not a huge issue. I mean, she has such high other stats. I'm sure that is compensating for it. And 94 reactions as well is really good. So yeah, uh, a good choice. And we can move on to this week's Pound for Pound Powerhouse nominations. I'll start off with the listener suggestion from Soviet Neil going for the 93 Galazzo hero Dimitar Berbatov. I've run the Spurs past and present team as my main all cycle and was excited to add one of my favourite players uh, of my lifetime to it. Having opened every conceivable objective pack to try and pack him with no joy, I gave in and went to the market and was shocked and delighted to find he was only 150k, which, let me tell you, is insane value for how much you get here. He's got five-star skills, and with his height and what I think must be custom animations, he moves in a really unique way. He glides through defenses, uh, just like the man did in real life. He's got Finesse Plus, which comes in very handy from all the proper angles. Traveller Plus as well for those round-the-corner passes to teammates. Uh, more or less maxed out pace and shooting with a hunter. The in-games for the entire dribbling section are in the 90s. 91 vision, 90 short passing. I think 97 composures now, something like that. And a cornucopia of base playstyles to boot. I used him as a false nine in the 4-3-3 brackets five and he returned 20 goals and 15 assists in a really fun champs finals for the price i don't think there is a better striker in the game an elegant dagger of a player exactly what i wanted from a berbatov card and yeah he looks really good i mean i haven't actually used him but i played against him quite a lot and uh, i think i do agree on the kind of custom animation element he seems to move in a slightly different way to other players which makes him kind of hard to defend someone i guess you know both of us well actually for me personally i think he's probably one of my favorite United players to watch of my lifetime maybe Josh I don't know if you'd back that but yeah I like him a lot there was just something different about him like my favorite goal he's ever scored actually wasn't for United it was for Monaco it was a chip where 
It was like you were at the park and you wanted to knock the ball back to the kids. That's what it looked like. You know, ball bounced in your direction. <laughs> you just knock. And he just lobbed the keeper who just so wasn't ready for it from a ridiculously tight angle. And it was one of those finishes you go, how do people not do this all the time? Because he made it look so easy. So, yeah, I, I, I having packed his 93 and used him, he is an absolute beast. I cannot believe he's 150k. That's the bottom end of his price range as well. So he may even actually be cheaper. Let's move on to the rest of our nominations before we talk about uh, Galazzo a bit more. So, uh, Nep, you're the guest on this podcast. Uh, who would you like to put forward? Do you know what? I would have put forward 94 Prins before I used her <laughs> and realised she's absolute bobbins. And so who I will put forward, however, is Francescoli, but his baby card. He has got a wicked combination Ooh. of Playstyle Pluses with uh, Acrobatic Plus and power shot plus, and for those that don't know, acrobatic enhances volleys quite significantly, and so it makes for some really, really fun goals with him. And he fits the uh, the evolution as well to get up to a ninety for free. So for twenty twenty two k, you get yourself a banging card. The only thing that he doesn't have is five star something. Yeah, he does look really and acrobatic. I think Josh, you've talked about it before, right? That it uh, makes volleys like instant goals, basically. Well, it's it makes volleys just good wherever it is, even if it's a pass. If you hit a like through ball off a volley with an acrobatic player, it's more accurate than having like hmm. incisive pass or even the long ball. You get the very similar animations, but they just hit them with a curve and a like power that I don't think you really get from anywhere else. But yeah, inside the box, outside the box, if the ball is bouncing, it, it's it's not always an instant goal, but it's never a like catchable shot. Like it's always got something yeah, yeah, to yeah. it. And when you mix it with the power shot, it's is it feels very broken. Um like I remember the Future Stars Evo, like Academy Strikers, they all got acrobatic and just popping it up from 30 yards out and hitting it cross keeper. It was it like so broken and I just never see anybody do it. Interesting. Yeah. And it's fun because actually, you know, I think this is the case with most of these where Francescoli has all the same play styles actually on the two versions, the 89 and the 91, but different ones are pluses. So you're still getting the benefit of the base version. And actually, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but the base power shot is not very useful really. So the fact that the play style plus power shot is on the lower card actually makes that probably a little bit more desirable in some ways because I'm a bit of a power shot merchant. Oh, I agree. I'm with you there. I think the difference between non-power shot and regular power shot isn't very much, but the difference between power shot and power shot plus is unbelievable. Yeah, it just feels like both regular power shot and the basic power shot play style just aren't quite quick enough to catch your opponent out unless you have like a stupid amount of time. Um, Josh, let's move on to you. Who are you going to nominate? So I I'm going for somebody else who's got acrobatic, and uh, I think it's probably the best free card we've been given this year it's got to be two meter Ooh. peter and you know when you put him through the free heroic chronicles upgrade like this card is really broken and mm. i'm surprised people aren't talking about it as much like it really reminds me of that vout veghorst that we got two years ago it's it gives really similar vibes but you put a hunter on his upgraded card he's basically max pace he's max shooting apart from his shot power. He's got 94 positioning, but 98 short passing, 92 vision. And then all of his dribbling stats are 80 plus with 96 composure, 98 jumping, 99 heading accuracy on a six foot seven person with aerial. <laughs> it's like, it's just so broken. Here's an interesting thing. I think it needs to be done as an experiment now though, is does somebody like Peter Crouch at six foot seven with 98 jumping out and, and regular aerial out jump like a six foot player with aerial plus it is interesting because when he comes up against like base van dyke the the percentage of headers one lowers significantly it's it's mm. still like very good and when he does get his head on the ball ball he's got power header plus so it's very easy to score from but it it there is definitely the difference i think between aerial and aerial plus is quite dramatic if he had aerial plus 
I have a feeling he'd be like Erling Haaland levels of broke and you'd be seeing him used everywhere, which I think is probably why he hasn't been given that. The other thing I've found with him is that it feels like the game doesn't quite know how to put a cross in for somebody who's six foot seven. Like it doesn't (laughs) know that it can put the ball half a foot higher than it usually does and him still be able to get to the ball. And so you're winning headers but at the same height, you'd win them if he was six foot one. There's, there's like really bizarre moments like that. However, the biggest thing for me with him is R1 square. Like the, the pros tend to do a um, player lock cross and I'm just not good enough for, for player locking. So I just like my R1 squares to the back post to Peter Crouch. And usually it would be a header down. But because he's got acrobatic and because he's six foot seven, And because he's got 98 jumping, he can win overhead kicks above defenders heading the ball. And so it's just like, it's so broken. And from corners, especially it's so broken because he can win the ball above the height of the goal with an overhead kick. And because he's got it as a plus, it's just like, it feels so auto goalie. I I just don't know that there's another player that plays like him in the game, kind of like the similar thing that, People were saying with Berbatov, who I think is a fantastic card. He just plays like nobody else does. And yeah, I, like I, for a free card, for a fun card, I'm, I'm, I could not be happy with that. I, I'm going to really struggle to like not at least have him on the bench. Yeah, I was going to say, especially as a bench option, it's a bit of a no brainer, really, isn't it? It's a different option to bring in. And you know, if you get a corner late on, you might as well have him in there. Uh, I had a, a guy score three bicycles from quarters against me with Crouch. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not sure there's anything you can do if they deliver it right, to be honest. The fact that he was doing a bicycle rather than a header, I, I feel like I'm not sure that an aerial plus player would have even got to it. But I don't know. Do, have you found that when bicycles happen, the defenders just don't really deal with it? Is that just a fact of life? I don't think it's necessarily that. Like, If he gets up into the bicycle animation, I feel like he's going to win it. But there are very often times when I'll ask him to do it, but because the ball gets met before it reaches him it it, it, like Mm. it doesn't happen but again that's all about delivery if you can put the right delivery in and you know you move him into the right position i was listening to the gameplay pod last week um and i think it was yepe saying that uh players had moved to completely manual player switching so that when they were defending corners they didn't get switched off harland was who they were using at the front post and when I've come up against people who've got crouch, that that's what I've had to do to try and at least like compete. Because I feel like if you can knock somebody who's in an overhead kick, it it can affect the accuracy. But I I wonder if his ninety six composure plays into that because he's like he can win it in very competitive, crowded situations, and it's a very very well executed overhead kick. Yeah, I agree. It is yeah ridiculously hard to defend, but also yeah a fun player to use. I'm interested to know if. You know, people have success against him, whether it is that, you know, aerial plus player who is over six foot or, you know, how tall do they have to be to actually compete with him? It's kind of interesting uh, thought experiment or, or practical experiment, I guess. Um, let's move on to um, a final nomination from a listener. I'll swap that in for my own nomination because I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, Neil D goes for the Golasso baby Jürgen Kuller. 30k for a card that if you run him through the free Evo with Shadow, he gets... 93 pace, 95 sprint speed, near perfect defending, 80 shooting on a CB with power shots, play style, uh, 91 reactions with 90 composure, 95 strength with 99 aggression. He also has all the defensive play styles you could want, including anticipate. He doesn't have intercept though, and that's kind of important. But anyway, uh, used him in champs and he was rock solid, always seems to be in the right place and can spray the ball around with his passing stats and long ball play style. A no-brainer if you need a CB and of course gets full chem in any squad, Um, which yeah, is a a good final nomination. I myself will have to nominate the Alawiran that I packed untradeable, um, which... I've been using throughout the weekend and he's a bit of a menace. Kind of unsure how much enjoyment he brings because you're still just thinking of that very OP Alawai ran, but uh, he's still a good player and has dropped a lot. I think he was initially like 2 million for a day or so and it's now down to a million coins or something, um, which is the case with a lot of these actually. And from a sort of market perspective, Josh, it's really been quite interesting to see 
how common they've made these players, I guess. It feels like people are getting a lot of them. Yeah, I saw a tweet this morning that said that Johan Cruyff is the most packed 10 million coin card we've ever had. And I've got to say, like from Twitter, it definitely feels that way because it seems like they are all coming out at a rate of knots. And like I've packed everybody bar, I think, four players that are released at the moment. Like I also have Alawiran. I got Cafu as well. So like the the kind of the packability of these players, I think has been a massive bonus. And I think that's what's maybe, because you said it's been received quite well. Actually, I think when the promo came out on Friday and even into Saturday, people were saying this was a terrible promo. I think as it's gone on, because of the pack way, people are like more and more on board because you can now add players that do actually improve or at least side grade your squad and give you something mm. different to do for a reasonable amount of coins or because you've packed them because we've had so many objective packs. So, yeah. you know, the, the fact that they're decreasing in price, I think is definitely because the moment you pack one, you're probably going to sell it because it's probably a duplicate. It's it's interesting as well. On Friday, I saw a lot of people saying, I can't believe more's not being made of how cheap the Aloe Iran SPC was, the 90 rated baby version. You know, he wasn't that much worse than his 93. At the current rate of knots, by tomorrow evening, the 93 is going to be cheaper than the SBC. So, um, yeah. you know, like, I feel sorry for anybody that may be committed to that. Or the many people who definitely committed to that and then packed the other version. Yeah, yeah, or packed the 93. Um, yeah. So, yeah, like, I. I I think the promo, like we've just done pound for pound. I think the whole promo is pound for pound promo, really. Like there's so many interesting cards, cards that you could link, you know, have some sort of feeling to like that 91 Van Persie is 75 K and just looks ridiculous. Five star skillers. I, somebody scored a few absolutely ridiculous goals with him. First time shots off his left foot kind of cross keeper against me yesterday. And then even from an SBC perspective, you know, and we'll get into the the coin cost of an SBC because it's difficult to really quantify it. But like that Rafa Marquez can go into the free evolution that we got and with a shadow is probably the third, maybe fourth best yeah. center back on the game. Like he's got outrageous stats. Uh, yeah, he can play him in CDM if you want. His passing's incredibly good. You've got a dead ball taker if you want it because he's got dead ball plus with 93 free kick accuracy, 99 shot power, 99 long shots. But through the evolution, because it gives him pace, you end up with 95 acceleration, 93 sprint speed, maxed out defending, 95 physicality. Like, that is just a ridiculous card for what is a very cheap price and feels like maybe the last hurrahs of a two play style plus game. I feel like we're being prepped for for the three play style plus is coming with team of the uh, team of the season. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm interested to hear what Net thinks of Galazzo and we'll do that just after a little break. Bum, bum, bum. Hello, welcome back after the break. Right, as I teased, Nep, uh, first time we've ever seen Golazo. I mean, I guess it's not got anything that unique about it, does it? It's, 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 trophy, it's Trophy Titans V2, isn't it? Yeah, Interesting. yeah, that's true. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess no regular players, it's all heroes and icons, yeah. Yeah, um, I, I liked it. When the promo came out on Friday, I, I was very impressed and I was very much blown away by the overall community's reaction of this being the worst promo of all time and such. But I think, as Josh alluded to, people are kind of coming around a little bit. But one mm. thing that I have... Uh, as an interesting thought, is this, right? Everybody was so angry for the people that got Lionel Messi from that player pick. But is Johan Cruyff more packed and easily obtainable and yet people are happy in spite of the fact that everybody's getting him? <laughs> He's surely more rare than the Messi. I don't know. Well, actually, 0.7% of the player base. That's not... That many? Well, yeah. It's, 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 it's just one of those weird, like, as you was talking about how, like, you know, the most packed 10 million coin card and people are, like, elated about it. I'm like, wait, hold on. <laughs> when Messi was really easy to get, everyone was up in arms. Uh, obviously, it was a few months ago. It was a bit of a different state of the game. But, no, I, I really like this promo. I really like the SBCs. I really like the uh, the promo team. As, you know, as Josh said, it's very easily packable. And uh, I think there's... 
it like for me it's, it's exposed a huge problem with the game that you've actually got players like Berbatov at 150k and would be cheaper and you you mm. know you've got players like that collar it, like I used his base one without the Evo upgrade in champs this weekend and he's insane and it's like he's 30k it makes sense that EA would make players like Cruyff and Charlton super packable because otherwise the I feel like the gap between the sort of like 99% team and the 100% team is just going to get even bigger and even bigger to the point where nobody would be interested in the game. Yeah, it'd be interesting to talk about this a bit. Maybe it's more of a gameplay related thing, but I don't know, Josh, like you, you use some of these players and you just think, how much more headroom is there? We could have three more play styles. I mean, how many did that Minu have that got glitched? Was it five play styles? Does that mean that there's room for, for five potentially before the end of the cycle? And you kind of think, how much can that actually improve a player, basically? Yeah, like when you ask how much more headroom is there, there's still a lot of headroom. I think, you know, you look at some of the quote unquote best players in the game, like you you go to this Cruyff and he's very good for sure. But in terms of like the four attacking stats, if you will, like dribbling, passing, shooting and pace, you can't get all of them to 99 with a, with a chemistry style. And his physicality, dare I say it, is a bit bad um so you know mm. there's there's definitely room even within the best cards in the game you know rolfo's brought up a lot and an outrageous card for sure but we can get like that level of card with three playstyle pluses where one of them isn't trickster that is going to be better you know maybe with a better mix of playstyles as well if you give uh, like a left back no defensive playstyles that that's going to affect how they play in game so i think we we we've mentioned it a few times how there are a certain selection of playstyle plus combinations that we are actively not seeing at the moment, and I think that's where we'll maybe see the game change. I also think that there's potential for a patch that will kind of crank it back a little bit. So even though players are better, you know, it will make those older players a little worse, make the new players a little better f- for whatever reason. You know, I definitely feel like. I don't think I've been on since the last patch that we got and it feels like the game's changed quite a bit. There's a few players now that were very good that I just can't use any anymore. That Okafor Future Stars card is terrible for me now and I was really enjoying him before. So I definitely think there's headroom. I think we get to this point most years where we go, mm. how much better could they get? And then team of the... Like, Team of the season is going to be a letdown. I'm just going to put it out there. It was a letdown last year. It'll be a letdown this year because EA don't want team of the season to be the end of the game cycle, which is what it was traditionally. And I feel like over the years, we've seen team of the season cards get less and less further away from what we already have. Better, like definitely cards that are desirable and that people will want to change their squads and you'll see squads change massively. But I don't think it will be this like cornucopia of 99 rated cards that people expect team of the season to be. It will be 93, 94, 95 rated cards and with three playstyle pluses. But I don't think they'll necessarily be the best combination of three playstyle pluses because guess what? We've then got the Euros afterwards. We're definitely going to get some sort of summer heat V2 type promo for that. Footies comes like as we move into silly season, that's when we get the cards that everybody kind of remembers the next year and falsely attributes to team of the season. So there is still room for this power curve to grow. The problem is that the power curve is so high and has been at this level pretty much for the last four months. And like, that's, that's Mm. more of the issue for me. It's less the power curve progress between April and August is kind of so-so. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. The power curve should be managed way better between October and April. Like the first six months of the game should be where we shouldn't be going, God, we can't get much better than this. Otherwise it's going to be like team of the season level. And that's where we've been for the last four months. Do you, do you think we're going to be in a situation with team of the season where they don't give all of the cards four-star, five-star or five-star, four-star? Yeah, because if they don't, we've had so many promos that have, and mm. if they give like bad combinations of three playstyle pluses, and then also like you know Mohamed Salah team of the season four star three star with you know tricks to plus and first touch plus, it's just going to be <laughs> it's going to be like a what's the point of this card? 
I like I, I think when it comes to somebody like Salah, I will definitely see I like he will be five star, four star. I think the vast majority of attackers will have at least a five in one place. I think you could see quite a lot of five star, three star, or even three star, five star. The thing that could fix that and the thing that I hope they kind of take the handbrake off a little bit is evolutions. Because if 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 it's like you can take kind of like we had for foot birthday. You can take a three-star skill move player to four-star skill moves or five-star skill moves. I think that's the way to maybe keep Team of the Season as a little bit more accurate to the players, which is what it traditionally has been. It hasn't really been a week four skill move addition promo too, too much. But I think that's a way to allow people to still have players that have got four-star, four-star as a minimum from like center mid forward. Because I think... I just I can't see people wanting to use a player that isn't four four minimum from centre mid forward, like at the end of April. Yeah, I, I I do agree. On the note of evolutions, something that I kind of like triggered, a th- like it's not that like some deep thought or anything, but with like players like that Berbatov at one hundred and fifty thousand coins and tradable and sellable if you bought him, and now some of the evolutions that are coming in at like 100,000 coins mm-hmm. for a negligible upgrade. Is it time for EA to even rethink the price points of Evos, not necessarily the boosts? Because you, you like it's 100,000 coins that you can't get back that then makes a card untradeable if it wasn't already. Whereas you can go and buy five Golazo cards for that. Yeah. yeah, it's actually a really interesting point because I was saying to Josh before, uh, Friday I think it was, oh, like uh, I feel like I need some uh, kind of beefier forwards, uh, I, I kind of like a five-star skiller who's quite strong, um, you know, maybe someone who can be you know lengthy in some capacity because actually if you look at the number of uh, strong five-star skillers in the game, it's actually very minimal if you're looking for players who are over six foot. Um, and I was thinking, oh, what evolutions might, work to to create that player i was looking at spending maybe 150k to 200k on the evolution and actually probably on on the player to evolve who you know if they're an inform or something they're quite inflated and then you know a few days later we've got berbatov who you know you can sell him after you're done with him and you know you probably wouldn't lose too many coins obviously he's at the low end of his price range at 150k you could drop down to like 100 maybe even under 100 and yeah as you say like it, he basically invalidates a lot of potential evolution options in, uh, and and obviously he gets full chem and he's got premier league chem to give as well so i think you're totally right like that they either need to significantly improve evolutions in terms of like the power of them or maybe just make them more open so that people can actually evolve the players they want to evolve because that would also probably compensate as in people are willing to spend on players they care about versus buying a player off the market so i guess that's kind of another way they could do it but yeah i think it's uh it's really true like i think that's an important point what you just said at the end there like listening to that conversation all it says to me is they vastly underestimated how much people want to feel like they're in control like th- that they can pick the players that they are using because if you're spending 100,000 liquid coins on any of the Evos at the moment, from a rational perspective, you're doing it wrong because you're not getting value for that 100,000 coins in any way, shape, Mm. or form. So the fact that they are still so popular, the fact that so many players go extinct that are like halfway... I was in Korea and Cristiano Ronaldo went extinct because there was an SBC that gave him like five star, five star. Uh, sorry, there was an Evo that gave him five star, five star. And I was like, yeah. look at his stats. He's still he's so terrible. Bad. <laughs> like he's still <laughs> awful, but he was extinct. And that's a gold card. It's not, that's not a supply issue in any way, shape or form. So the fact that they, that so many cards go extinct, the fact that so many people love evolutions, it just says they have misplayed their hand with Evos, in my opinion, massively this year, probably from a caution perspective, but, it makes me question if, you know, how many people are buying packs with coins at the moment? I know I am. If they brought mm. out a million coin Evo, I think I'd probably do it if it gave me like a 94 rated player with five star, five star that I could choose who that was and they had good stats. I'd probably do it. Yeah. I mean, Nep, if there was a million coin evolution which made one of the players from your Evo Arsenal account into kind of an Alawiran level player, would you do that? Yeah, in a heartbeat. Yeah. Josh, you said before, like, evolutions are so popular. Are they popular or are they popular on social media community? Like, 
like you, we, I never know. You know, I think evolutions are massively popular because I love them, and so when I tweet about them or post about them or you know put them on YouTube, whatever, my community is also fully engaged. So I'm in an echo chamber of people that love them. But are they really that popular? I think they are solely because of the number of cards that go extinct. And I've seen a lot of people say, oh, but that's only because of investment discords that they go extinct. It's just like, in my opinion, it's not true because they have to be selling them. Like investment discords don't just buy cards and not sell them. You have to sell them. And in order to sell them, there needs to be the demand to pick them up. They aren't then being bought by more investors. They're being bought by people who want that card to use it in the evolution. And when we have Evos come out and 20 cards all go extinct, that is a vast proportion of the play. It, I'll tell you one thing for free. It's more than 0.7% of the player base. Yeah. <laughs> so I do think it, I do think it's a significant portion that really enjoy evolutions. And whether that's just because it's new and shiny or whether that's because they're, it's actually like a useful tool for the game is a different question. But I definitely think, and the Ronaldo one's the example because you have so many Ronaldo fanboys in inverted commas, whatever you want to call them, Ronaldo fans that want to have a good Ronaldo card that aren't going to afford his team of the year card that probably don't want, like haven't afforded his, was it a triple threat or whichever card he had before that. The fact that Trailblazers, yeah. Trailblazers, that was it. The fact that he went extinct says to me that people want to use their favorite players. They want to try and make them usable. And I think that is quite a wide ranging thing when people play the game. Why, why did people say that Pez didn't work for so long? Because they didn't have the names of the teams or of the players and people want to identify with the players that they love in real life. Well, Evolutions is the, it's kind of like the next step in your ultimate team is allowing you to make your team actually be your ultimate team. Japes talked kind of rather like philosophically about what is the aim of the game? Like, is it actually to build your ultimate team? Well, evolutions is the obvious path towards that. How that works with the current game structure we have, I don't think is, I don't think has been worked out because it could, I understand why it could ruin the market. It could ruin the like fact that people use different teams all the time. If you're using the same team every single game, maybe you end up getting bored of it. But that's then on EA to give us reasons to use different teams. Again, it all comes back to that, like, give us some reason to use something different. Give us somewhere repeatable to try something, to have some fun. That's where I think evolutions in the game needs to progress. They, they I know this is a content pod, but they could have not quite the Evo Lounge, but something like it. And the re restrictions can just be different each week for the current crop of Evos. Like you must have a mm. this Evo card or even just the promo. Like with the Galazzo promo, they could have an Evo lounge where you also have to have like three Galazzo cards in your in your starting 11, right? And then now all of a sudden you're still pushing the pack side of things mm. as well as the Evo side of things. But I think uh, that, like one of the things, I, I don't know how much money they make off of Evos. I assume that they're, return on it is massive because they don't really have to do an insane amount of work for, you know, just putting a 500 feed point Evo there or something. But I think imagine like a store pack. So a million coin pack or, you know, whatever, 5,000 feed points or whatever, whatever they're going to price the Evo at. And then just have it like repopulate every 24 hours for a week. So you can get seven of these, but you're spending how much coins, how much money. I, I wonder if they would be in the store instead of in the Evo section if more people would maybe buy them because it's like, oh, what's that? Oh, okay. I'll go, I'll, I'll pick that up for my card. Yeah. And, and it would remove all of the gambling arguments that people talk about with store packs because you know exactly what you're getting, but are willing to pay for it because you know what it is that you're getting. Yeah. I mean, like you, I think they are pretty popular. I don't know that is necessarily the discoverability element, you know, having the evolution in the store that would necessarily drive people to do it. But I think it's more likely that there are committed players out there that aren't doing them just because, well, there are so many SBC options. There's players coming out of packs that are actually better than the ones they could evolve. And maybe they're uh, worried about committing coins and time to evolutions that A, can be kind of high friction to do as someone who doesn't play squad battles. They are a bit awkward. And also, I guess, uh, they may slip behind the curve. And often players that we actually want to evolve 
aren't eligible for whatever reason or maybe they've already been evolved maybe you discarded them in the past and so you can't evolve them again um, which we talked about on a previous week and is important to say although you can of course take different versions of that player and evolve them um, but yeah it's a very frustrating thing uh, talking of evolutions we still need to get to a recent very popular evolution and uh, we'll do that just after the break Hello listeners, a quick reminder that this podcast is made possible through the generosity of supporters out there and actually they aren't just doing it out of the kindness of their heart because you get a whole extra podcast every single week as a supporter and you can sign up for a seven day free trial right now over on Patreon and after that it's just three pounds a month to continue supporting it makes a huge difference the podcast for a time wasn't able to be weekly because I had other work commitments but this has made it possible to deliver a podcast every single week and in fact an extra one too just for supporters as I mentioned so if that interests you and you want that extra content and actually if you would like even more there's the support to discord at the gold tier there is the hall of fame at the end of the podcast in the icon tier there are loads of perks available Uh, so why not check it out if you haven't done so already by searching support for weekly or following the link in the description of this podcast if you consider doing so that would be hugely appreciated and a big thank you to all those supporters as i said keeping the podcast going and keeping foot weekly weekly right let's get back into the pod hello welcome back after the break now uh, josh club 99 shooting suggests actually that there might be some other club 99 evolutions coming up which is interesting to note um but it's been very well received it's 75k which you know isn't the most expensive evolution it's still coins but the fact that it's sort of a unique upgrade taking a player to 99 shooting and doesn't upgrade that overall is something that's been, I think, well received, right? I like this 99 shooting Evo. I think it's what we need a lot more of. Maybe not as extreme as to boost a card to 99 shooting. It doesn't give you a um, a rating upgrade, which considering where where we've been with Evos recently, where we've been getting plus fives, but the actual upgrade has been a plus two or a plus three, that's really good. The fact that it's giving Finesse Shot Plus, which is a very good playstyle plus, I, I feel like it's coming back a bit now from like it was super overpowered, then didn't really hear too much about it, but I'm seeing it being used a lot more now. There's another issue that I I don't want to mode about Evos because I love Evolutions, but Max 7 playstyles. I understand why it's in there because they don't want players to have more than 10 playstyles, despite the fact that we know that it's possible because we've seen the glitched Evos. But if you have a player that has chip shot, Traveller, power shot, and has eight play styles, you can't put him into the evolution or her into the evolution, despite the fact that they would only end up with the exact same number of play styles. It's another one of those like oversights of the system where it's holding people back. And I just don't know that it's necessary. I like this. I like the five star, five star evolution that we got during foot birthday. I think we should get more of that kind of minimal upgrades to important areas of cards. I hope that we start seeing specific stat ones, reactions, composure, stamina. But the way that it's being implemented is, again, indicative of a like game runners that are terrified of what might happen if they just release the break ever so slightly. Yeah, and in saying all that, you know, there are some really good options, but it should be said that pretty much all the good options need to be combined with those birthday evolutions. I feel like Josh has rather monopolized the evolution chat there. <laughs> no, I, I agree with like with Josh's sentiment and like what Josh said about you know individual stats for reaction, composure, stamina, things like that. I would love to yeah. see like a just a literally open blanket anybody can fit a stamina one that gives you ninety nine stamina and relentless, and that's it. Mm, Nothing else, yeah. no upgrades, no ratings. Just, just let me take my really cool striker that I've got now. I've actually got Eddie and Ketia, and he's got 70 stamina. Everything else mm. about him is insane. But it's like yeah. now all of a sudden this card is unusable. And I, I would probably pay 50k coins to get him to 99 stamina just to make sure that I could use him when I want, not when the game tells me I can. Yeah, I actually really miss... What was the Evo that boosted composure? And was it Reactions? There was a specific one, Stop Right There, was it? Or something like that? Yeah. It was one that was really nice for just bringing 
more players into usability because they would then get the composure boost, which was so lacking on quite a lot of lower rated players, I guess. So yeah, it'd be nice to see some of these. And maybe we will, you know, considering we've seen the shooting one. Uh, we don't have too much time left. I did want to chat briefly about the SBCs. There aren't too many to talk about, actually, and we mentioned Alawai ran earlier. Uh, Noz did message in saying, uh, with the new Mia Hamm SBC, I'm interested in the panel's review of the base version. Ben mentioned that he packed her earlier in the cycle. Not sure if it was the base version or the team of the year. It was the base version. Uh, but would appreciate thoughts on value and whether her card has that special something, i.e. those few cards in which the base version is worth completing because it can effectively compete with team of the seasons and other cards coming out in the summer. So... I would say the first thing is that her price is quite high for the SBC versus the market version. It's 1.3 million coins for that Mia Ham on the market and 2.3 for the SBC. But a week or so ago, she was 2.3 million coins on the market. Obviously, the SBC has dipped her price a bit, but also there's just been a general dip in uh, prices of higher tier players because of how strong and cheap Galasso players are. So that's worth bearing in mind. Yes her relative value uh, has dropped, I guess, but a week or so ago, you could argue maybe she was worth it at this price. And because of the fact that you can get fodder at a much higher rate than coins, obviously coins is a bit misleading. So if you're interested in getting an untradeable Mia Ham and just having her there because you're a fan, I think it's actually not a bad idea to do this SBC at all because you are going to get a Mia Ham that is still, in my opinion, very, very usable. I still have her in my team. She's a mainstay, really fun to use because of the five-star, five-star and power shot. That obviously is going to be a valuable thing throughout the next weeks and months. And the base play styles are very good, actually. If you look at the Team of the Year version, which is like 6 million, the difference isn't huge, especially because the Playstyle Plus, she got an addition, Rapid. She has as a base play style already. I'm actually quite glad she's being considered bad value because I would not want to face her frequently. She is a real menace in the right hands. Maybe give the loan a go if you're unsure. Um, the five games might be hard to get a full sense of her because she's quite unique, but uh, I still think it's worth giving that a try. And yeah, I, I would kind of recommend her if you like the player and, and want her first owner untradeable. It makes a lot of sense. Um, talking of SBC price discrepancy, that Kamara, you mentioned before the pod, an example of this, he's like 70k and that's so much more than he would be on the market, but actually not really reflective of his price. I definitely think looking at the coin price, it, it, even me Ham as well, looking at the coin price is ludicrous because it's not how you need to decide whether an SBC is worth it. Kamara's just an 82 and an 83 with informs. You, I mean, you get informs out of everything that you open now anyway they're not hard to pack like there was during like team of the year and stuff but the inform upgrade as well is really cheap and affordable and coupled with the exchange the 83 by 10s the player picks you will be able to complete that lamine kamara within like no no time at all just playing the game and okay there might be a better use for your fodder but you'll be able to complete him the the thing i like about his card is he's incredibly well-rounded but the thing I don't like about his card, it doesn't. it's not really to do with his card, it's, it's to do with where can you play him again? Because who wants that card in the current climate of the game? No one really. But have EA made this card knowing that in 10 days from now we're going to get an evolution that he fits into and becomes a 92 rated superstar? Yeah, that's true actually. Because he's a really good kind of base for a player, I think. And we're not surely that far away from 88 evolutions? I don't know, maybe we are based on how long it's been. 85 and 86 though. Actually, a final bit of business that we might need to wrap up this pod on actually is uh, the whole fiasco, which I guess not everyone may be familiar with um, around the uh, Yaya Torre. I think there's a few other players as well. Uh, compensation situation. I don't know whether Josh, you're able to explain how this came about because it is something that yeah, you've been doing consistently as a sort of compensation mechanic, but it's really come to the fore and I guess been exploited this time. Yeah, so it's it's happened a few times. I think the first time it happened was just after Team of the Year where it was John Joe Shelby, I think was the first time mm. it happened. Yeah. He got a winter wild card, uh, so just before Team of the Year, where it it came out and it was Kaiko Rizespor, I think is, was, is the team he plays for, but it had Premier League as the league. And the way that 
EA decided to fix that was that if you'd have bought a John Joe Shelby off the market, you still kept that card that now was Turkish League, but you got all of the coins you spent back. And then it, it happened maybe once or twice in the intervening time. And again, the way that EA fixed it was to give that money back, like give you all the coins back and you got to keep the card. So you're essentially like doubling up your coins. But what happened recently was because they were because it was Yayotori and the fantasy cards that were so expensive, a lot of big accounts bought a lot of these cards. When the mistake happened, they jumped in, bought a lot of the cards, the prices went right up. But it almost doesn't matter that the price has gone up. As long as you can buy one of these cards, you know you're getting those coins back anyway. And now you get to keep this very expensive card essentially for free. And if you sell it, you've made a bunch of coins. There are accounts I've seen with... 96 million coins that have been given back to them. And they've still got all of those special cards in their club. It's yeah. it, it, it's a really weird solution because EA, this feels very not EA. It's lazy, so maybe it is a bit EA, but it feels very like not how they would usually fix it. Yeah, it's weird. What would you say would be the solution then? Because I was trying to think about this and I was like, how do you kind of make up for that because obviously people could genuinely just buy this player and then find their leagues changed and you're like I don't want that player anymore and it could actually devalue the player quite a lot but the only solution is a buyback where yeah. or, or, or a rollback where they give you the coins but take the card from you okay yeah, and then yeah, they yeah. relist the card on the market for whatever price it is that that would be the that would be the obvious solution to me because you know you can't keep a card that's got the wrong league so they, they they're going to have to change the league but there's no reason to give you all the coins and allow you to keep the card. That's a weird way of fixing it. So I think it would be like an auto buyback where you know you, you can sell it for what you bought it for back to them or change the quick sell of it to whatever you bought it for. And and they can reintroduce the card onto the market if they if they see that the supply drops. That seems the obvious solution to me. I, the, the fact that it's doubling people coins up just means that whenever the next mistake happens with a card watch for that price of that card just go sky high because why wouldn't you do it? You know you're getting all the coins back. And the first time they don't give those coins back, you watch the community yeah. go into utter meltdown. Yeah, another frustrating error which seems to work out in uh, people's favor uh, in a kind of way that people understandably are quite annoyed about. So very frustrating. Um, to just end the pod on a slightly different tone, Nep, uh, which Arsenal players are getting in team of the season? What do you think? Oh, geez, man, don't because <laughs> oh, I will have slightly. <laughs> I, I genuinely think it, like it won't depend on this because we're going to get to team of the season before the league finishes. But I think whoever wins the league like should be more favourable. Like for example, David Rye has the most clean sheets in the league at the moment, and we've got the best defensive record. But Allison's one of the top save percentage goalkeepers in the league, so. If City win the league, I think Edison should be the goalkeeper. If Arsenal win it, I think mm. Rye should be the goalkeeper. So I don't know. I, I, I like for me personally, I think Saka has to be there. I think Erdogan mm. has to be there. I think both our centre backs have to be there. But we won't get two centre backs mm. in in the same promo. I feel like it will probably be Saliba for hype reasons, but maybe should be Gabriel. I yeah, think. but I I th I think Gabriel's been much the better centre back this season. Yeah. I, I, other than that, me, like maybe Declan Rice. Like mm. he is, he's really coming into his role now as well. Like, but there's so many good options, isn't there? So yeah, th those first four, the two centre backs, but specifically Gabriel Erdegaard and Saka, I would put into team of the season. I wonder if Rice's fantasy card was the team of the season card is that it? he's not going to get. Mm. Yeah, that would kind of make sense, wouldn't it? Maybe they're thinking about that ahead of time. I hope they do Odegaard justice this year because last year yeah. was just an absolute joke. It was it was like, bad, wasn't it? Yeah. It was so bad. So yeah, fingers crossed for Odegaard because yeah, he deserves it. Uh, we can ask uh, Josh and Chapes what uh, Bayern and United players are going to be making team of the season this cycle, I guess, on the Gameplay podcast. Uh, we'll be doing that as the supporter episode this week. Finally going to be reuniting Josh, Japes and myself after, what, two or three weeks. So looking forward to that if you'd like to become a supporter then yeah free trial just search support for weekly so nep thank you very much for joining us on this content pod been interesting as always to get your insights yeah appreciate it if people want to catch more of your thoughts you do stream a lot right so people can 
can check you out yeah. on uh, where are you streaming these days? Still Twitch or moved over to Kick? Twitch and YouTube. Yeah, uh, Kick. They haven't they haven't off the bag yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, wherever you're streaming, whether the bag has been secured or not, uh, people should check that out. And uh, finally, yeah, thank you very much to Josh. It's been great to have you back, and glad you enjoyed checking out Park's house. Yes, come some of that. Uh, thank you very much. It's been uh, it's been nice to be back. Nice to uh, get back into the swing of things and. Pack luck's been on point recently, so just pick up where I left off, really. Yeah, indeed. Great. All right. Well, that does wrap us up. Thank you very much to all you listeners out there listening in. A reminder, you can subscribe via all the different podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts from. And of course, you can catch the pod on YouTube. If you are catching it over there, then drop a like, leave a comment, do subscribe. It definitely helps out. And of course, as I said, if you would like the other episode every week, the supporter episode, then you can support. Just search support for weekly or follow the link. A huge thank you to all those supporters supporting the pod and keeping it going. And to those icon patrons. Dave B, Hugh J, Darren W, Alistair M, Dom P, Rob P, Jeff B, Damon H, Tom B, Adam G, Neil P, Alex M, Jake S, Dan W, Roger D, Lee A, Andrew C, Nishant, Waterman, Dylan H, Adam R, Rob L, Brendan W, Michael K, David G, Jimmy K, John D, Michael B, Aditya S, and Joshua K. Plus a special thanks to Luke M, Dave B, Hugh J, Tom M, Darren W, and Pato Foot for advice and production assistance. Before I leave you, just one more thing to add though. Ultimate Team is a bit like life really. It has its many ups and downs. If you're having a few more downs than ups in real life in these more difficult times, then please don't feel that you're alone or need to struggle on without taking action. If you go to thecalmzone.net, there's loads of resources, advice, support, or even just a friendly chat for anyone who needs it. If it sounds like it could help you, then head over to thecalmzone.net. And for now, have a good one, and I'll catch you on the next podcast.